G'day guys, it's Mac with the Outer Circle. I've been a bit hesitant to create videos lately. I'm in a place where I'm trying to figure out what content I want to be curating in proper videos. I've offered so many strong opinions, right or wrong, over the last few years that I feel like a change is needed. I think that maybe offering my arguments but giving others the final choice of what to make of the video might be a more wholesome way of conducting myself, but I just don't know. Anyway, this video, I came across a comment today, a comment on a nearly four-year-old video, and it was talking about Primaris and how the Alpha Legion and the Raven Guard of the Heresy had them. And now my opinion in the video was, no, they did not. And it got me thinking, with some time to get used to them, where do I sit now after a few years to really mull over Primaris? Well, firstly, I do like the models and the scale. And as I've said since day one, they do look good. I think a few of their units are more misses than hits, but overall they work. I do, however, have a huge issue with how they fit into their universe and the Armstrong levels of stretch involved in retconning in their existence. And when I did that video on how the Raven Guard having them was false, well, I, th I feel like I was on the right track. But this is the comment I got today, so I'll read it out to you first, and then we'll, we'll go into it some more. Literally finished the audio drama to Deliverance Lost and found this video to be, in a nutshell, horse shit. So many things not taken into consideration and gotten wrong. It's obvious that this book and the Sons of Selena as trying to mesh the Primaris in the overall setting better than when they were first introduced. I had a whole list of points, some already mentioned by others, but I'll simply boil it down to Korax managed to use the genetic data to create 500 new marines that were stronger and faster. Whether or not they were true Primaris is not actually the issue. The point is in a short span of time, he managed to create better warriors. The Alpha Legion have had this data and material, not corrupted data they gave Horus, for 10,000 years. A Legion already known for altering their marines to make them bigger, Already known for using their Primarch's blood to grant themselves temporary enhanced strength. Already known for the ability of their librarians to swap legionnaires' minds with one another, to name a few. To think that after all this time, they wouldn't have been able to enhance their own legions slash themselves? To have a Primaris equivalent is just ridiculous. Whether it be through the data they stole, or by swapping their minds with captured Primaris marines. So yeah, the Alpha Legion Primaris, or their own equivalent to totally fine, and fluffy for players to do enough of this shit. So, it goes to show how quickly you forget the extent to which some changes have occurred. The Raven Guard novel Deliverance Lost came out in 2012. That's a full six years before Primaris Marines, and I don't think Gav Thorpe was in on the fast train on that one. Games Workshop themselves state that it takes two years from concept to realisation. Therefore, they probably came with the Primaris Marines sometime in late 2016. Are you really so sure that the Raptors mentioned within Deliverance Lost are the same as Primaris Marines? Well, let's think for a moment. When Korax came up with that project he had been given the Emperor's own knowledge on how he created the Marines, the Primarchs, the Custodes, and the Thunder Warriors. He gave him all that genetic knowledge, transferred it to him psychically, so much so that it actually overwhelmed Korax's Primarch brain for a moment to take in so much information, he nearly blacked out. And he then had to work with his apothecaries closely in order to make it a reality. And the the uh, material they were using was the direct genetic material of the uh, Emperor. It was the raw Primarch DNA, basically. And that's what they were putting into the Marines. That is very different to what came later, as I'll explain. But to go away from that for a moment, take a step and look at Belisarius Call's introduction to the Horus Heresy. So, Deliverance Lost novel came in 2012. Belisarius Call is 2019, and he's introduced as a lowly adept in the closing stages of the Horus Heresy just before Beta Garmin occurs in the lore. So it's hard for him to have worked on the Primaris project for Korax some seven years earlier in the Heresy. The two are just not related. Then you look at the Raptors themselves. 
So going back to what I said a moment ago, Primark genetic material introduced into recruits to rapidly met metamorphose them into Marines. Um, and they're not even Marines, they're something different. There's almost no talk of organ modification in the story, as the Primark DNA acted almost like a mutagen, it changed the host's body into something between that of a human and a Primark. That's quite different to a modified Astartes with additional organs from the Custodes and other unknowns, which is what the Primaris are. The time frame here is irrelevant in that regard. So what about the Alpha Legion in this story? Well, who the fuck knows with the circles within circles nonsense done to them over the last decade, where their plans are so comically over the top convoluted they resemble less grand strategy and more just Spectre in James Bond. And, well, come to think of it, is Blofeld the real Alpharius? Well, what do we know? We know that the Legion fragmented pretty heavily after the heresy, their last ditch effort made against the Ultramarines where supposedly Alpharius was killed or one amongst many, circles within circles, yada yada. It's all authors pat themselves on the back for overcomplicating the story, I think. But anyway, people love the meme. We know that the research into the genetic material taken by them would have been kept on the very need-to-know basis within the Legion. The whole Alpha Legion wasn't privy to what went on. It would have been a select few in Alpharius's inner circle. That material would have been a prime target for any aspiring warlord to get his hands on. The Alpha Legion of 40k are much closer to traditional Chaos warbands in 40k than their 30k incarnation. Yes, they utilise spies and agents, but they're also petty, they're jealous, they're easily manipulated to serving the gods' whims. Just look at that one guy in Siege of Rax to get an idea. Do we really think that these guys were able to achieve supermarines and then just coolly sat on it? I think that's dubious at best. I think the rival factions within the Alpha Legion would all be duking it out to get that material if it even still exists. My guess is Alpharius put it in some hidden cache somewhere that only he himself was privy to. Okay, so who could make this work? Well, what about Fabius Bile? If anyone could have made Supermarines, surely it would be him. Well, it would make the most sense. Some kind of Primaris-like hybrid would have been a great companion piece to release alongside his new model. We know, for instance, he has the Primarch's genetic material. It was given to him by the Alpha Legion. The downside? It was infected with demonic virus, which mutates the genetic material. Being demonic, it thinks and it changes itself so it cannot be cured, that's the nasty thing about it. And it would mutate those who uh, had the material put into them. The thing is though, Fabius would gladly give that shit to a victim anyway. Who cares if they mutate? He wouldn't. The Raven Guard Raptors were notoriously strong and resilient and Fabius would love that trade off. He doesn't care about a few mutations, especially if they're advantageous. This is the same Fabius Bile who even before the full on drop to chaos, so did decapitated Eidolon's head back to his body and managed to bring the rotting tissue back to life. It's the same Fabius Bile who sewed Xeno's organs into Marines. Growing a tental, tentacle accidentally, that just means he has something else to uh, experiment on. Fabius was given a lot of knowledge into Astartes and Primarch physiology by Fulgrim himself who sat down and taught him a lot of these things in order to help his research along. Fabius is so good he managed to physically clone perfect replicas of multiple Primarchs. He's the guy that can make it happen. Sadly though, we know that he and his model's new release were both squandered with nothing to do and nowhere to go in the story. But the question is, I suppose, where am I going with all this? Because I've just spoken and commented about a reply to a four-year-old video. Well, I have to ask... Is what has been done in the background law with Primaris Marines repairable? Can what the Primaris are, what they represent, be fixed? The short answer is, it's unlikely. But I do have a solution. The best route would to be making them simply another type of armor, people have said. Take uh, Primaris Marines, just say it's Primaris Power Armor, like Corvus Pattern or Maximus Pattern. To me, sadly, too much is out there now. Too much talking about how cool they are, how superior they are, all the additional genetic material they have, how regular studies bow before them. They're just so cool, you know? How do you fix that? You can't. You can't just retcon that away with new armor. Enough damage has been done without doing that too. My original idea, where they introduced that 
Primaris are actually Thunder Warriors, and that they have Astartes and Custodes organs, which brings them genetic stability, that doesn't work either. Even though I think that's the way they should have gone, they didn't. So we're beyond that point too. Is there still a way to fix them? Yes. Yes, there actually is. And people won't like it, but I've got a story arc for you, so bear with me here. The logical story arc is you have Korax come back, and with his wisdom, hard-earned in the days of his own experiments, which failed thanks to manipulation, but he doesn't know that, he would vehemently oppose Gilman. Korax takes up the mantle of the leader of the Imperium, and he would run the Imperium beyond the Cicatrix Maledictum, the far side of the galaxy, and from there his Eastern Empire rivals the Western, but never quite reaches those same highs. Over time, these two Imperiums grow more distant, reluctant to aid one another, with various fiefdoms on both sides pledging themselves uh, to the other as they see fit. Eventually, Chaos tries to subvert this, and moves are made to actively stoke civil war between them. You know, like an actual capable adversary and not a punching bag would do. Now, in this ensuing strife, it's revealed that Call and the Primaris Project utilise techniques which were forbidden by Gilliman. And in his quest to achieve the impossible, Call has gone too far and has himself slowly succumbed to chaos without realising it, the human part of him being all too susceptible and weak. His work as a whole becomes suspect. The Primaris Project is viewed as an abomination, like the 2nd and 11th Legions were before them. Call's fall is very much like what happened with Luft Huron, a good man trying to do good things pushed too far, and going too far is what takes him over the edge. Now, the Primaris are seen as the step too far as a whole, something which are to be forgotten and erased from the Imperium. The Imperium begins to rally to Korax, seeking to slowly begin rolling back the Primaris project. Whilst the Marines who submitted to the project are tested and seem pure, the superstitious Imperium cannot abide by them, and they are no longer recruited. Instead, they are being left to slowly die out, their gene seed left to rot after they begin to fail and fall in the battlefield. Gilliman is left despondent at this and falls into a dark, depressed mood, withdrawing from governance, seeing himself as a failure yet again, letting his own self-doubt take over. Korax, he too withdraws, seeing the damage once again wrought upon the Imperium by the Primarchs, even when trying to do what was right. Once again he was condemned, and he himself has condemned, a generation of Astartes to death for no more crime than being alive, and in their absence, a hole is left in the Imperial hierarchy, desperately needing to be filled, perhaps by their brothers or some other enterprising individual. On the tabletop now, the Primaris will simply become a subfaction of the Astartes. Their characters still legal, but in the background, they are now marked with a stigma. The regular Marines simply take over the equipment, and we just pretend the old Marines are the same height as the new guys. Just know that one day, Marnius, Kalgar, Mephiston, etc., they will die, and when they do, they may not be mourned. This is about the only way you can rationalise the Primaris, I think, and the older Stardis Rangers. And when they do eventually bring out a new armour type, call it Mark 12, Mark 14, for instance, whatever, we can reintroduce some of those old armour attributes like the scowling Voxhelm from Mark 7 as a nod to the past. The new range is here to stay. But we can keep it around and still be consistent in the universe, I think, without needing a Gary Stew or a Mary Sue like Belisarius Call, and dozens of novels trying to retcon the financial decisions of a company in the 2020s over the artistic vision of the late 80s and early 90s of a small company of passionate guys who created it all by homaging their favourite media. In this world I've laid out, the Imperium is where it belongs. Fragmented, damaged, more xenophobic than ever, having given up their best asset without realising it in the name of superstition. The heroes are fallen from grace, the Primarchs withdrawn in disgrace, and in desperate need being beset on all sides by enemies. I guess you could say, in the grim dark future, there is nothing but war. So what do you think about this? Do you think this could be the way we do it, that we could rationalise the Primaris into the law, make it work so that They aren't just better marines that are just cooler. And also, what about the first half of this? You know, do you think, if you've read Deliverance Lost, 
that it does set up a Primaris well. Just because Corex created Marines quickly, it means that it's easy for Belisarius Cool to create Marines quickly. Do you think the Alpha Legion should have superior Marines? Because they once had access to that technology. What about Fabius Bile? Do you think he was squandered like I do? I want to know what you think. Anyway, I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.